Hi, everybody. Um, yeah, so I'm actually a retailer. I, I sell things. Um, so I'm here to give you a case study on how we redesigned our website, going from a black site to a white, or as I might like to put it. So, anyway, um, so uh, firstly, a brief introduction to Shoe. Um, we've got 136 stores. We've got six here in Dublin. Um, we take about 20% of our revenue online. Any of our customers in here? Oh, well, Claire, you don't count. You came with me. Um, this is where I'd like to do a. <laughs> this is where I'd like to do an Oprah Winfrey moment of shoes for you. You get shoes and you get shoes. But um, so um, we're an incredibly mobile-focused company um, and incredibly mobile-focused website. Um, we've got a young demographic. We're, we're typically a sort of millennial age group. Uh, so. You know, and this is what our traffic's looked like for about the past six years across devices. We keep an eye on this a lot. You know, I've been compiling this for six years and, and just building it up over the years. It's something we, we pay a lot of attention to. Um, our conversion rate on mobile is our highest year in year increase in conversion rate. Um, it's, up, it's about 50% higher than other devices on mobile. And we work hard for that conversion rate. Uh, you may be familiar with this. I hope you're familiar with this if you're on mobile. So the uh, mobile scorecard data um, using the Chrome, uh, Chrome user experience uh, reports. We do, we do OK. Uh, so. But I could talk about this stuff all day, as, as Craig would uh, testify to that. Um, so before I go on about it too much, let's go back to the redesign. So this is the site as it was. And this is a conversion event, uh, but a spoiler. Going from a white site made no difference to our conversion rate whatsoever. So uh, this is not a best practice tip of go from black to white or indeed the other way around. Um, most of the rest of this presentation is a walk through the project timeline. Um, this is a project that was 20 months in the making. Uh, and I've got 20 minutes, 27 minutes. Um, so I'm going to have to race through this a little bit. We've learned a lot along the way. Um, I hope you find it interesting. Um, I really tried to make this as honest as possible. It's a little bit warts and all. I make no apologies for some of the slides that are a little bit information dense because I've actually taken the verbatim emails and correspondence and documentation that we used internally as this. Some of the emails between the team, uh, anonymized of course, to protect the innocent. Um, so, you know, it is a little bit warts and all and I, I hope you can forgive that, but I think it just makes it a little bit more real for you. Um, and you've heard a bit about some best practice today. Um, and while we do have some crossover with that, um, maybe not as much as I would like. So on to that, on to our timeline. So September 2016. Um, we'd had some informal feedback from our brands and internally from our, our buyers saying they didn't feel the website was very cool, whatever that is. Um, I have no idea what that is personally. Um, see Michael for cool. I mean, I wear a waistcoat like Michael, but that's where the comparison stops. Um, and then in August 2016, our largest competitor launched a new design. So that's a real catalyst for change within the business. And you know, always watch your competitors there. And there was a management team meeting next month, and they said, we must redesign our site. Um, first thought uh, that came into my head, um, damn it is maybe the... Uh, a kind word is maybe a gentle word. Um, I have a fellow Scottish presenters on later who might have used stronger words, but because um, every CRO I know would advise against redesigns. They're just so, such a brutal instrument, such a, br such a brutal change. I mean, it, we're not doing it for our customers, we're doing it for us, we're doing it for what the brand said. I mean, that's not exactly great research. But still, these things do actually matter. Um, our brands, if our brands don't think we're cool, they, might, they would do limit what we can stock. Because brands don't sell every style, every pair of shoes to every retailer. And they tier the retailers by basically, I, I keep going back to this word, but basically how cool and where that retailer is positioned in the market. If we want to change the perception with the brands and our website is our main front door, we need to do something about our website. Um, but the, the one silver lining we have is that the brands and a lot of people are in, um, internally just look at the website and the desktop. They are desktop first, but our customers aren't. You've seen before that 74% of our customers are on mobile. 
So I'm thinking, wow, right, OK, so we can maybe concede some ground in desktop because like, not re real people don't watch it anyway, look at it anyway. So. But, so, September 2016, new design. Uh, so we were all obviously just sat around waiting for this massive project to come. Loads of res resource sat there, of course. No, actually, we were really busy doing other things, just like everyone else is doing. So at this time, um, we were, um, all of 2016, we were uh, busy specifying up a new platform, uh, which we have our own website platform, we're rebuilding that. Uh, so 2016, we were built, we were specifying up with a massive specification. So um, we had a European site and we wanted to have a German language uh, site and we had an Irish site, uh, thank you, Ireland. And we have a UK site where 95% of our revenue comes. We wanted to bring those in one platform, pay back a lot of technical debt. That's a talk in itself. Um, so specifying all that up. Then December 2016, um, we were wanting to, uh, we were building that and then testing it. It took ages. We totally underestimated the time to do this replatform. And in that time, it, the business expected us to have a, a redesign. Um, other things we were doing, we moved the full site to HTTPS. I wanted to do that as soon as we come out with the new platform work. Um, and this is genuinely a thank you to Google for all those carrots and sticks for getting us to move to HTTPS. The, the, you know, the removing of a geo lookup on Chrome and, and different things, because I was really committed to that. I think it's great for consumer security and trust, and you know, we know why we need to move to HTTPS. So um, yeah, we, we this in the plan as well. But back to the design, so. So the first thing we did, the first thing I saw my role in this was to preserve our conversion rate. You know, we get this massive change. It, this could be a real backward step in terms of, we've learned so much over the years, this could have been a major backward step in everything we'd done with the conversion rate. Because there's no way could, way could we take all that accumulated knowledge from years, we didn't even know what knowledge we had, and then somehow translate it into a brand new design. So what I wanted to do this, I, I didn't see it as my job to input into the design as such, I just had to set some parameters. And these are what they are. This is the actual document that uh, myself and some other people within e-commerce created. Um, I'll very, very quickly run through it. I'm not going to go through it all in detail. Um, the slides will be available later. Um, but top here, conversion rate by device could not go down. So whatever it did, we could not go down. And well, that's what happened, as you'll see. Um, <laughs> I'll just finish now. Um, so, but there's some other things in here. So we've got lots of different things in here, but things like not creating additional workload for teams. So don't, create, don't add in like 20 new images for products or really, really change how we display things in teams because people take, you know, it takes a lot of money and time to, to create a website and to keep it maintained. Um, services, we're a multi-channel retailer and all those services are really important to, to what we do as a multi-channel business. So just because the conversion rate um, stayed the same, or, or maybe got better, it stayed the same, um, the, we had to also support the stores and these other things. Um, as I've said, site speed's a big thing for us, it couldn't go, go slower. Um, shouldn't cause a reduction in our net easy score, this is a measure we have of how easy people found the journey bit of a soft metric, I would take that with a pinch of salt. Um, and we also don't want to significantly increase dev time to make changes. Um, basically, that was my codified way of saying, don't go from responsive design to some other design paradigm that meant we had different, you know, different websites for different devices. So, uh, you know, th this was, uh, these were our red lines, and this document proved incredibly valuable throughout the process. So where are we? So that was only our sort of input into this, but there was a lot of scoping work taken. There was a lot of sort of evidence taken from different people across the business. And we actually um, got an external design agency to help with that. So we appointed them in the spring and they kept coming back and we, we came up with some, with some designs pretty quickly in there. Uh, we completed the designs by uh, June, fantastic. And that was June 2017 and this just went live. Well, what happened? Uh, oh, um, it was huge. The, the, what they came back with was like, 
we were never going to be able to build this, and we're never going to be able to build it in a way that we could guarantee that conversion wasn't going to go backwards. There were just too many changes, too many risks in there. So it wasn't completely back to the drawing board, but we had to take a bit of a look at ourselves and see what was important about this design, what could we look at later phases so we can do this in a more measured way, which we did. Uh, in November 2017, we actually had completed designs. Um, November, uh, not a quiet time in retail. Uh, Black Friday, um, Christmas. So there wasn't a lot we could do in there. I mean, November was when the new platform was going live. So that was a bit of a busy time. We couldn't get on building this until after Christmas. Um, it's such a peak uh, time for us that we need to make sure there's capacity in the, capacity in the websites, there's a lot of load testing, and like I say, um, the new platform had to be able to cope with that. I have to say, new platform project worked to treat, and that, you know, that scaled and, and was, a, it was a great success. So, um, in November, well, we're, this was always going to be an A-B test. I wasn't going to be happy that just to say, well, this is what the sort of trend conversion rate was like, and now this is what it is with the new design. This always had to be an A-B test. Um, I'm not sure if any of you have ever done big multi-page tests, a test that is as big as going from a full, black, full color changes and palette changes plus some other bits and pieces of functionality, but it's pretty much impossible to do with a front-end testing tool. Um, this was going to have to be a back-end test where we had different page templates. Um, because uh, imagine the scenario of the black website loads, then your A-B testing tool loads, kicks in the design, and then it flickers and changes over to white. That's not going to be good. Um, so it was going to be server-side A-B test, and we had to set how we were going to do that. Uh, so uh, as part of that test, well, we had to say, um, what KPIs were we going to report in this? And this, again, some verbatim correspondence here, and I'll not go through it all, but again, primary metric for the test, conversion rate. There was other things we were going to be interested in. The bounce rate, so I guess the whole theory of this is if it's a better brand experience, people are going to be more engaged. And of course, um, you know, Simo talked about different engagement metrics and things like that. Bounce rate, he conceded that bounce rate was an engagement metric, so I'm going to kind of go with that. Um, and then we've got some other things in here. So the home page had a massive change in it, going from some small banner images to massive hero image. I was concerned it was going to really slow down the page. So I've got home page bounce rate in there, um, add to basket rate, um, and some other bits and pieces. So we wanted just to understand what was happening here. This is a learning exercise as much as anything. So what, were people, if we have a better brand position, does it mean that people are buying different products? What, what is the sort of manifestation of a different brand position? But overall, this was what our test hypothesis is. Um, and this is the important bit, of course, the hypothesis. We hypothesized that an update of our brand and website should have no negative impact on the website conversion. It's a null hypothesis that says, we make this change and nothing goes wrong. And I guess that's what every null hypothesis is. And that's what we're all doing, I guess, when we're A-B testing. But this is the document we shared out. Um, so um, we st in January, we came back after the um, Christmas break, and we started building the website. And there was a lot of testing. There was a lot of user testing going on. So it was, a, it was an agile process as much as we have one, uh, where we had um, analysts, test analysts going out and doing um, moderated user testing on some features. And this was, this was yeah, full on, full on. Um, and then in February, we were starting to get some pages through and we're functionally testing that as more changes were being applied. This took, you know, a couple hundred man hours. In fact, no, a lot more than that. Um, you know, probably three, four hundred man hours of um, just functional testing on the website. It was a big change. So the way I wanted to structure the test was we would do a week test where we would start with a very small amount of traffic and trickle more in all the time. And this was just a smoke test. Work out if something was badly wrong here. You know, this is, this is a lot of revenue at stake. So we are literally just looking for some red flags in there of things going badly wrong. 
And so the plan would be, of course, we've done a lot of sort of prep work and everything should be going pretty good. And then um, just so a week after that, so we'd say we'd any rem quick remediation that we had to do in that middle, uh, middle week and then go fully live with a 50-50 test. So we're trying to really stack the dice in our favour or at least make sure we're not creating a design that was going to be too bad because this was a change that had to happen, could not fail, but very much had the possibility of failing. And it been, you know, we had directors talking to our brand saying, oh, look at our fancy new website and showing them visuals. And we had people from the top of the company down going, where's this website? And oh, it looks great. It's going to be great to have this great brand experience. And this was hy hyping up to the max internally. So we really needed to make sure that this was not a failure. Didn't need to be a success, but could not be a failure. So these were some results. Um, so part of this, um, everybody, as I said, everybody was really wanting to know what was happening here. So uh, what did we do? What did we do wrong? We peaked. We peaked constantly. We didn't call it that at the time. What we said it was, we were sharing information with stakeholders. We were sharing it on a daily basis because within an hour or two hours of the test going live, we had a director coming to us saying, how's the conversion rate in the new design? But, you know, you, you, you all may have done tests that where you've got people asking you right away, how's the conversion rate? And you've had three conversions. You go, you know, a zero or whatever. You know, I've, I've had nobody through the variation yet. Oh, the conversion rate is zero. It stinks. But, yeah, so we peaked. We, every day, we thought we were being super generous to everyone. We sent all this out on a daily basis, all this information. It's beautiful. And, and I thought we're doing, doing everybody a kindness by sharing this. And then we ran through day by day, so you can see this sort of split of traffic. It's kind of going up, it's going up, it's going up, it's going down. The whole thought was I would get to here and it'd be like 50% already. Why wasn't I? Because of this. And this was not good. And of course, this was a smoke test, and this was supposed to find problems. But we saw this. We had all these chiefs looking at us going, doesn't look good, does it? I was like, oh, yeah. What am I going to do? You know, it's up, it's down, but if I go into a 50-50 test with this, this might not work. This might fail. And we're, you know, we might not get to complete this or we might be forced to make it go live. I mean, this, jeez. So I wasn't in a happy place. And a week went past and we, we had a meeting and we... Um, got some information together, but we looked to this and I was like, what are we going to do? Right, so what did I do? Give myself a good shake, basically. This is something from uh, an organization called Leadership Trust. Or in, um, and they talk about this grip self. I was driving in on a Monday. We'd, we'd had a week of being off this test and seen these results, and we were just, we were, everybody was asking us loads and loads of questions, saying, what are we going to do? Uh, can you look at this thing? Can you look at that? Oh, that's interesting. Can you look at this? And we were in analysis paralysis, and I was driving into work, and I was like, no, right. We know what we're doing here. Let's, let's get a grip. I need to get a grip. Get a grip of the team, get them together, and say, right, we know what we're doing. The problem was we communicated this badly. We can fix this. So what did we do? Well, I'm a great believer in, well, lots of different analysis, really. But in this case, well, we combined some Google Analytics data. So we saw where we had some differences between the two sites. So different interactions, different, you know, those secondary metrics and everything like that. So we saw those there. We then did a whole lot of remote user testing to try and really zoom in where we thought the, the issues might be. 
And then the most important step of that is we had some potential insights, there might be insights, there might not. We then looked back at the data and said, right, okay, we think we can see uh, some sort of phenomena here. What is the size of this? Does this affect more people? The, the qual data or the qual insight shows that there is a phenomenon here. What, what does that mean? So what, what did it mean? So we saw less people using the search bar because it wasn't apparent that the search icon, the magnifying glass, opened and closed the search. People thought you used it to search. Well, duh, you would. It's a search icon. Um, so you know, users identified it wasn't an easy task to complete. Our delivered promise is really, really important to us, but it wasn't really that important. It wasn't really visible, and we could see that people weren't seeing some of the other service messaging. So, what did then we we'll come back to the data? So, in terms, yeah, there was actually a big difference in here. Oh, um, confidence interval, net five percent confidence interval in this. Um, and then these ones, so in terms of people seeing this message, we could see, so people would in theory see it, but they might not actually have seen it, would just know it would be on the screen. But we know for this white site, they weren't seeing it. So we had some insights there. So what we did was we made some changes. We changed some of like the basket page, we changed the search. But what I did was I said, we need to do this within a week. So we just set the end point and said, right, whatever we can develop, test, and deploy in a week is all that we can do. And then we're going to do the second test. So let's get it right. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't, the 50-50 test was a failure. And then we'll send the designers home to think again. And we changed how we were going to communicate it. And this was the result, the 50-50 test. So Going back to the spoiler, no difference, right? Going from black to white, none at all. So colors, doesn't, doesn't matter. Or it might matter, but in this case, didn't matter. A um, little bit of a difference in desktop, but really, where most of our audience is, there's nothing there. We talked about confidence, we talked about significance, and that was key, and key in this message. So what did we learn? Because this is really the heart of it. Don't freak out. I freaked out. You know, I've, I've gone to conversion, uh, many different conversion events. I've heard loads of experts. And I know this stuff. Cognitively, I know this stuff. But it, my head was just, I saw the red, I saw the green. I saw, like, yeah, I freaked out. Don't freak out. This is something we did well. We agreed in KPIs up front. We shared them around. Everybody knew how we were going to measure this test. We knew the other things we were going to measure. They'd all agreed to it. They'd all signed up to it. There was no mystery. And I would say to you all, that's, that's certainly something I would do. Um, what I didn't do, and then what we subsequently did well, was really say, and, and, and this is in terms of the whole design process, what, I should have done, what we should have done with the redesign say, is we need to be, to be live then. We need this much testing. We'll need this much development time and work backwards. We really just said, well, let's just start from now and kind of see how we get on. But we kind of want it to be done for the summer. But it wasn't a solid project plan. So start with the end. Start with when you want to have this finished. It's a, you can always come back and do more work on your website. This does not need to be everything. Stick to your guns. Now, the number of times I have said to my boss, I can't show you these numbers. Um, and he said, well, I need to know. Um, he doesn't need to know. He wants to know. There's a difference. Do you know, when somebody says they need to know the numbers of this test that's two hours old, you're just telling them some lies. I mean, you're giving them some precision and sacrifice and accuracy. So, you know, stick to what you know about CRO. Just the same thing. Don't reiterate that. The language and presentation of things matter. So big lessons. That uh, chart, or well, that uh, spreadsheet where we had all the metrics, we had red and green. 
Red and green are just such, em such emotive colours in a spreadsheet. We all know that if we see a negative no number, if we see something red, it's danger. Oh, conversion, <laughs> conversion rate's down. Well, it's down by, you know, 0.3%, and it's not statistically significant. So actually, it might not be down. This is random chance. You know, we are, so, <laughs> but yet we showed it in red and green. We led people to conclusions that were not there to be led to. So, you know, think about simple things like colour and language. We needed to remember that we were doing a fixed horizon test. Don't peak. Don't, don't peak. I can't overemphasize it. You are doing a fixed horizon, null hypothesis, hypothesis significance test. Be scientist. Use the scientific method. Don't do redesigns. But, so. so don't do this. Don't have red, don't have green. They're insignificant numbers. Make them grey. Just go, I don't. What I should have done is this. There's no significant difference in the conversion rate. Because there wasn't. Statistically, there was no difference in them. We'll provide you the answers at the end. We'll tell you that things are not going too badly. We can do that on a daily basis and say it is not on fire, because you can usually tell that. If there is no significant difference, that is literally that, that you could swap the two out, and there's no difference in conversion rate. And we did that. We went from black to white. So what we had, what we got. And so you can see brand experience. Is that cool? I don't know. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm a big fan of the sandal, but these aren't really my colors. Um, and then, obviously, importantly, on mobile. And actually, there's less of a change on mobile because we still have kind of full width images. And um, things like site speed didn't go down and everything like that. But it's been very well received, actually. We've had a lot of positive feedback. It's great, but positive feedback does not lead to a change in conversion rate, as the numbers show, certainly in this case. And last but not least, really, this is just part of the team that was involved in this. This was a human endeavor. We've had the, the, the photographers and people who provide the images. We have project management. We've got some analysts in here, developers. We've got a couple of designers. You know, this really was a team effort. And we did actually work really well as a team. And that is something we've, we have taken home. So thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>